Gaming laptops are often presumed to be rather expensive, while offering less performance than that of their desktop counterparts in the same price range. So what happens when you set out to buy a gaming laptop with a budget of less than $100? Well, starting off, I started off by searching for the specific model laptops on eBay. Neglecting to search the popular models as chances of finding a deal are much lower with something like that. Instead, I started searching for obscure, forgotten models. After searching a few models and having little to no luck, I came across the Sager W87CU. It was originally listed for a completely outrageous price of $150, but I then offered $110 and it was accepted. But you're probably thinking, that isn't $65, you retard, and you'd be absolutely correct. But there's more to it than that. See, this retard didn't know how to package an item and ended up just tossing it in a beat to hell Amazon box with no additional padding or anything. So it was just flopping around freely, which it doesn't take a genius to know that isn't good. So I received the laptop and it was scratched to shit, scuffed, and damaged. There was LCD damage and damage to the spacebar on the keyboard. So I messaged the seller who thought that it was my fault somehow that the laptop was damaged. But I guilt tripped him for a hot minute and then I got a $45 refund the following day. Leaving the total price for the laptop to be $65, which actually ain't bad considering mechanically this laptop runs flawlessly. The history on this laptop is rather vague. From reading a singular review on the top end model of this laptop, of which there is a link in the description, the NP8760 ended up costing $1,959 on the low end, with the top end model costing $3,574 which had an i7-920XM and a GTX 280M, but of course, we don't have that. Instead, we have a configuration I would estimate to be in the lower to mid 2000s, price-wise. With that said, we're packing an i7-740QM, which is a first-gen mobile chip running at 1.7GHz based off of a 45nm architecture. It's got 4 cores and 8 threads, obviously, and to pair with the CPU, is a 2x2GB kit of DDR3, making the grand total 4GB. It's a pretty shitty A-Pacer kit, and I cannot confirm if it's the original kit or not. Regardless, the GPU we're packing is a Meme HD 5870M. It's got 1GB of GDDR5, which was good when it was released, but we'll see just how well it holds up all these years later. The screen is a 17.3 inch 1080p 60Hz panel, although there was an option for a 120Hz panel. For storage, we have a Kingston 120GB meme drive with nearly 32,000 hours. Not to mention, one of the previous owners pulled the hard drive bracket and left a piece of foam to hold the SSD up. I think I'm going to need a 3D printer considering how many hard drive brackets and battery covers I'm missing for laptops. Anyways, I'm not going to even bother replacing the thermal paste as I have plans to remove the GPU and CPU later on. And considering that the 5870M still goes for a pretty penny, I might just have to pull it and sell. Regardless, I powered on the laptop with a 95 watt power brick that the laptop came with, failing to realize that there wasn't enough power being supplied if the system went under any kind of stress. But the system booted, and with having a fresh copy of Windows 10 Pro pre-installed and activated, I set to downloading all of my usual applications and some games to benchmark. I had to choose wisely, as I only had like 90 gigabytes of space, and I had to uninstall a lot of stuff just for the second round of benchmarks when I got around to it. Anyways, I went to go boot up a game, and the system shut off. I thought for a hot minute, then I got a 180 watt Delta power supply from a Clevo P150SM, and booted up and began benchmarking on this decade old behemoth. Starting off with PUBG, on 720p with the lowest settings and 70% render, which is about as low as I could go, the system struggled hard. We were able to grab an average of 29, which doesn't seem too awful, right? But we also had a 1% and 0.1% low of 1. Not to mention frame times were atrocious, like I could lift both hands off and I was still moving. PUBG was an unplayable shit experience to be honest. Moving on to CSGO, we ran the game at 1080p with the lowest settings and 2 times MSAA anti-aliasing. With that said, in the in-game benchmark we were able to fester an average of 61, which in and of itself is rather shit, but then again CSGO was also bloated. The 1% and 0.1% lows are awful too, with them being 9 and 8. There's no way this could ever even be considered for competitive play on the system, at least in this configuration. In my opinion, the average needs to be well into the 150s and up, with the 0.1% low being above 100. 
Onto something from the era of this laptop, we've got Call of Duty Black Ops. With 1080p and medium settings in an online match, we were able to get an average of 64, with 1% and 0.1% lows of 25 and 11. There just seems to be a common theme with this laptop and struggling to present decent low figures. I guess you could argue that I'm expecting far too much from this laptop, but you have to consider that somebody paid over 2 grand for this and it cannot even consistently maintain a multiplayer match in a game that released less than a year after it. Although I'm sure you'd see great figures on 720p low with decent low figures too. On the Fortnite, I chose to run the game at 1080p with the lowest settings and the render scale set to 360p. In a solo match, we were able to get an average of 19, with lows of 5 and 4. Honestly, this is a bit better than I had expected, although the frame times were a bit munted. I can easily see you getting your ass handed to you in Arena if you play on the system. With the absolute classic of Minecraft, we ran on 1.14.4, with Optifine Launcher on the absolute lowest settings in a 12 chunk render. Considering that, we saw an average of 94 in Creative, once the TNT went off though, shit hit the fan and that's when we were met with our 1% and 0.1% lows of 4 and 3. Honestly, I would recommend playing Minecraft on this as long as there is no PvP involved as this configuration can prove to be very inconsistent. Onto our last game benchmark of the video, we've got Left 4 Dead 2, which is a game from the same year this laptop released. With that said, on 1080p with the lowest settings selected and 2 times MSAA anti-aliasing, we were able to get an average of 107, with 1% and 0.1% lows of 38 and 20. This was actually a rather nice experience considering I had a bunch of mods installed. Rounding out the last of the benchmarks for the day, we have Cinebench R15. After a couple of minutes, I was presented with a rather decent score of 272, which is roughly on the same level as the desktop Core 2 Quad, which is pretty alright for a 1.7GHz chip. With the final synthetic test of the day, we have 3D Mark Fire Strike. After running the test, we were able to get a score of 1439, which is just utterly shit to be fair, but the 5870M is pretty old. Considering this is a laptop, and that it has speakers, why not check out video playback and see the quality of these speakers? Through playback, it went on without a hitch. Take a listen to the speakers. The speakers are actually rather shit, they're extremely tinny and severely underwhelming considering the sticker price of this laptop. So we know this laptop isn't extremely capable in this current config, but let's take a look at the build quality and I.O. The build is just plastic, and cheap plastic at that. The silver trim pieces are cheap as well, leaving a lot to be desired, but the hinges are rather strong, requiring two hands to open, even after a decade. The lid of the laptop has severe flex when not a ton of pressure is applied. Honestly, if this much money was dropped on a laptop, I'd at the very least expect an aluminum chassis, which is absent here. In all fairness, Sager isn't really known for making high quality products, instead they make supposedly high performance machines while neglecting user comfort. On the topic of user comfort, the I.O. is actually rather nice on this system. On the back of the laptop there's an HDMI port, two USB 2.0s, and gigabit ethernet. On the left hand side we've got a 56k modem, CATV, a 701 card reader, firewire, a single USB 2.0, and a blu-ray drive. On the right hand side we've got audio jacks, SPDIF, an express card slot, eSATA, DVI, and USB. Not a bad selection at all if you ask me. As for the keyboard and trackpad, well there's a lot to be desired here. The keyboard isn't backlit, and it really should be at a price like this, but the keys themselves are actually alright. There's a very primitive touch bar that has a few options on board. I honestly can't see myself using it though, simply due to its overall size and slimness. So at the end of the day, do I see this laptop as worth it? Yeah, because the graphics card itself will recoup most of the money spent on the entire system. And not to mention, it's a phenomenal platform with tons of potential. If I end up putting the work into it, that is. But I most likely will end up doing it at a later date, if you guys want to see something like that anyways. I could even try to see if I could retrofit a 120Hz panel into the laptop. So that's it. 
If you liked this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uploads are going to slow down as school is starting back up again, but I'll try my best. I'll see you all in the next one. Blowing past here, whole squad with me smoking on that gas. Yeah, past that over here, bitch. I'm trying to disappear.